Hello YouTube, this is Bladefinger here again, uh, coming at you with my first knife review. Uh, sorry it took a little while, I think I'm around six videos in, and um, I kind of decided I wanted to do a, uh, a budget style knife for the first review on the channel, and I wanted to get reacquainted with this knife and handle it a little more, so I carried it for two weeks straight. The last uh, 14 or 15 days I have carried this knife. It is written in my pocket the whole time. And um, yeah, so without further ado, let's get into the review. This is the Ontario Knives Rat Model 2. This is the smaller version. They have a Rat Model 1. This one is the black on black uh, color scheme. And they also actually, uh, they have a couple other options. I've seen a few others, but the ones that I saw on Blade HQ right now are the black on black for around $30.95, the black and stonewashed, I want to say, and then they had a pink with stonewashed and a pink with black blade. Uh, we'll get into pricing uh, here in a little bit. Uh, I want uh, just wanted to cover the options real quick. Uh, some specs on it. Overall length is 7 inches. The blade length is going to be 3 inches. And then your cutting edge is going to be about 2 and 3 quarter inches. You have a little bit of a uh, non-sharpened area right there, which I'm kind of fine with. Um, your blade thickness is going to be 0 .09 inches. So about 9 hundredths of an inch. I think it does uh, pretty well for this knife. I think it suits the uh, size well. This isn't going to be an extremely hard use knife. The blade material is going to be a AUS8 steel treated to a uh, 58 to 60 Rockwell hardness and it does perform like pretty much any other AUS8 steel. Um, get into that as well in a minute once we finish up the specs here. Handle length is going to be four and an eighth inches. So that's what you're, uh, you're going to get on the handle. I can get all four of my fingers. I have about medium sized hands. It is a nice full grip for me and I really do like it. Blade style is going to be a drop point, drop point with a flat grind. And the finish on this one is going to be black. And as you can see that coating does wear off a little bit. And one thing that's important to a lot of people, weight. Weight is going to be 2.75 ounces. So definitely not the lightest in this range but I feel like that weight is well worth it so the handle materials are also a glass uh, GFN material I'm not exactly sure what that stands for I'm pretty sure it's glass reinforced nylon something similar to that correct me in the comments if I'm wrong the pocket clip is repositionable all four places so tip up left and right tip down left and right and the thumb studs are ambidextrous. Of course, this is a right hand liner lock. Let's take a look at that lock up while we're here. Lock up is late, but lock up is also rock solid up and down. No play at all, and this has a lot of use on it. Side to side, there's a little bit, but that can be easily fixed via the pivot. All these screws can be removed, and they do not strip like that $275 William Henry. All right. So, let's jump further on into this review. So, the ergos, ergonomics, any hot spots, anything like that, um, really didn't feel any hot spots with the knife through use, uh, through carving, through cutting cardboard, zip ties, you name it, pretty much any EDC task I did. Um, forced this through a bunch of cutting tests uh, just before I uh, turned on the camera. I cut up a ton of this double thick corrugated cardboard and it did extremely well. Um, all the cuts were pretty smooth. And this is after a, uh, a at least a week of or at least two weeks of use. And I did use it prior. I have not sharpened or stropped this from the factory. Um, I know you guys probably want to see a paper test, so uh, let me get some paper out real quick. Paper test isn't going to be all that great. It works. So, definitely not the sharpest ion, but as you can see, it gets the job done. 
It's held very impressive. I've carved cypress and whittled in cypress. I uh, smoothed out a fork to make a small little slingshot. Um, I've carved on a little bit of oak and, you know, just pine, stuff like that. Just kind of testing the knife, seeing if I could feel any hot spots. And back on the ergos, I know I do get sidetracked. No hot spots. The, uh, the clip feels nice. No hot spots whatsoever. The two, um, I guess, hits you could say I have against this knife. Uh, the jimping, when you're carving, if your fingers get a little bit uh, clammy like mine do, my hands get really clammy when I'm using my knives, that jimping goes from useful to not so useful. Um, it works in a pinch. If you really bear down on it, it does grab your fingers. Uh, I wouldn't say it's mediocre. I'd say it's a step above. I'd probably give the jimping a uh, 6 out of 10. Uh, it works but it doesn't work as well as I would like it to and especially what this knife is geared towards kind of the more outdoorsy style knife uh, I feel like the jimping should be a little better on that also the GFN handles no traction whatsoever there none it is non-existent it's just just no traction uh, you can see there is a little bit of a patterning on that but it doesn't go deep and it's not sharp so it's really almost more of a look I mean if I do this it's almost feeling completely smooth so there's not that much traction on this at all and the jimping's mm, it's on par I guess you could say with the price point now one second I got my talking points on my iPhone I'm sorry this review's janky um, my iPhone keeps locking up on me but anyways, got a couple more talking points I want to get to, then I'll just kind of wrap it all up. The performance of the knife, excellent. Performance is excellent. Flicks out wicked fast. There's no need for any kind of wrist flick or anything. I've never had it not lock up solid on a deployment. It, it It's just a great knife. It really is. So... As far as performance, I have no problems with this knife whatsoever. The AUS-8 performs very well, on par with pretty much any other AUS-8 blade. Uh, a lot of cold steels use AUS-8, and uh, a couple other companies as well. And I believe Ontario did this very, very well. I've cut a lot of stuff. I've gone through a lot of cardboard and a lot of carving. And as you can see, the knife still passes the paper test. Not really any snag-ups on it. And... Um, it just works really, really well. I absolutely love it. Uh, also, lockup. You can say that's a late lockup. I don't really care. Uh, I've never been a snob for early or late lockup. It doesn't matter as long as it locks up solid. Now, it came to me like this. It always had a late lockup. Um, it really... I have no beefs with the performance of this knife whatsoever. The detent's great. It's not one of those knives you can flick the blade open like that using your force of just flicking the knife down. It doesn't happen. It's not coming out. Now, one of the things I will say on performance is if you get these coated versions, that paint comes off very easily. Not extremely easily, but it comes off pretty easily. So, um... If you do get the coated versions, expect for that paint to wear. You can see where I've used it quite a bit right in there. Tip. Wearing a little bit. And on the spine a little bit. And of course on the uh, pocket clip. But to me personally, I don't really care. I like it to have a worn look. I use my knives. I like people to know I use my knives. So as far as performance goes... I give it an easy 10 out of 10 for the price point. I have no beefs with it. The side-to-side -side play doesn't bother me. It's very minimal. And if I really wanted to, I could take my Torx bit and fix that side-to-side -side play. Now, let's get into price and other options. All right. So this knife retails for $30.95 on Blade HQ. I'm looking at the page right now. This is my computer. Um, I do all of my shopping on Blade HQ. There are other websites, and you might find some exclusives. I'm not sure. I haven't looked around. Um, but I will say, for the price point, you know, you have your open, 
pillar construction right here. That way you can just blow it off, rinse it off, whatever you may uh, be doing at the time. I usually rinse it off with some water, hit it with a hair dryer, let it dry, and it's good to go. Extremely smooth, and I haven't had any problems with rust whatsoever. And being in the northwest corner of Louisiana, it's an extremely humid environment. Um, the only reason I'm doing this review so late right now, it's at the end of the day, it's just past 10 on November 11th, is because we had a giant thunderstorm, and I tried recording the video, and it just did not work. The thunder was so loud, it was shaking the house, things on my table were rat rattling. It was, uh, it was a pretty severe storm, so it didn't work. But, as far as... Um, Competitive options. I uh, got a few here. One of the main ones I don't have, I used to have. I want to get another one, revisit it, and do another review on it. The uh, SC Knives, uh, I want to say it was the uh, Zancudo. That's what it was. I got that one off a of Knife Center. That is a great comparative option to this knife. I think they run around $30 as well. I think they're also sporting AUS 8. A great competitive option. I love that knife. I will be getting another one in the future. Uh, I just have so much stuff planned for this channel. Uh, it's it's going to take a while. Uh, I might get to it sooner than later, but there's no telling. But I do have a couple options here. I will go from uh, most expensive to least expensive. This is coming in at $34.95, I think, on Blade HQ. This is the Cold Steel Femwolf. This is a nice, real solid, no play at all, uh, triad lock design. And this is not as deep carry as the um, the wrap, but it's not a big deal to me. I'm not a huge person. I, I don't care whether it's deep carry or not. It really doesn't bother me. But um, this one is also sporting AUS-8 steel. Kind of close up on that. These are both made in Taiwan. Uh, while I see that in the viewfinder, I do want to mention that. Both of these blades are made in Taiwan. So for you U.S. snobs, not going to be the knife for you. I feel bad for you. You're really missing out. Um, Cold Steel is going to be a bigger knife. I believe you're getting a 3.5 uh, inch blade with this one. And you're also going to have a different grind. That's going to be a Scandi grind. Put these pivot to pivot. Maybe around a 3 and a quarter. But, also with the cold steel, this is a non-coated blade. And that Scandi grind really is amazing. Um, stupid me, lent it to a friend. And they hit the concrete with it. Not fun, gotta touch that up. But, other than that, this knife is shaving sharp. And stays shaving sharp. And be careful when you close it. Because if you're stupid like me, you get that happening with your finger in there. Uh, one difference... Uh, between this and the Rat 2. Pocket clips are repositionable, but not for tip down. For those of you who like tip down, uh, I'm pretty much a tip up person, but it doesn't really matter. So that is one thing to consider. So that's competitive option number one. Competitive option number two, uh, this is a knife I always suggest to people as a first knife or just a cheap budget knife. This is the Case Sodbuster Jr. These can be had for around 35 bucks as well. This is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful knife. Uh, a lot of use on this one. It doesn't really show use as much as the others. And this is just a beautiful knife for those of you who are the U.S. knobs. This one is made in the U.S. of A using a stainless steel. It's just a beautiful knife. The handles aren't going to be as grippy. Uh, these are even smoother than the Rat 2 Cold Steel. They're a little smoother than Rat 2. And this is a slip joint. This isn't going to be as heavy of a use knife as it is these two, but I look at knives as an EDC knife. I uh, use them in normal everyday EDC tasks. I'm not testing the hard use functionalities of these knife, knives. So, as far as an EDC knife, absolutely love it. Not going to have a pocket clip, but no one needs a pocket clip. This is a beautiful knife for the money. So, another $35 price option. These two are a little bit over. Let's look at one that's a little bit under. The uh, Kershaw 6024 BLK. A lot of use on this knife. Uh, the pivot's really stiff on this one. Um, I've tried to adjust it, but this doesn't lock in and this just spins with this. 
So there's really like, I, I guess there's not any loosening this knife up. This was a uh, Valentine's Day gift. It was a pre-order and it got here in July. Funny little story with this knife, but absolutely do love this knife. Uh, this is more of a three finger knife and it's really smooth. I think it's the uh, same handle material, probably that GFN has about the same texture. The jimping, mm, not so great. But what I do like about this knife is you're getting that Emerson design for a fraction of the price. This runs for around $28.95 on Blade HQ. And this is a great knife. And even with this knife being so stiff, that Emerson Wave opener does still work really, really well. And also another perk, you frame lock people, you got something to like with this knife. So uh, this is a frame lock, liner lock, lock back, slip joint, frame lock. So you got many different options here in the kind of the same price point. Uh, this is 28. These two are 35. Ontario Rats, 30.95. And I'm gonna bring in one more option. And keep in mind, I'm still including the SE Zancudo. That's also a great option. We'll be picking up another one of those. But last option for a competitive knife in around the same price range. This one's gonna be the cheapest out of all of them is the Buck Vantage Select 340. I absolutely love this knife. I, I just love it. I love everything about it. It's a small little three finger knife. Uh, it feels great in your hands. You got a plastic heat kind of handle. It's not a lot of grip, but for an EDC knife, this knife is beautiful. You're under a three inch blade. Size comparison to the Rat. Pivot to pivot. A little under a three inch blade. A little bit shorter handle size comparison to the Emerson these are going to be really similar actually Let's put them butt to butt and they end up being pretty much the same as you can see just the different design uh, this is I want to say 8 CR on the uh, 6024 and like I said the M Wolf is AOS 8 and this is just labeled as stainless. Uh, somebody might know what they use. Put it down in the comments, please. This is a nice little liner lock right here, though. The Vantage Select, a little bit earlier lockup, running about 50%. Very solid lockup. No play either way. Um, the Sporting Bucks 440 with the Bose Heat Treat. This is a wonderful little knife. You actually have a two tone with this knife. You have a stonewashed flat with the uh, grind line finish. And then you got your uh, Bose Heat Treat logo under the 340. But, and this is a very deep carry pocket clip. I would assume you can switch that over to the other side. And just take those two screws out, flip the pocket clip over. Um, the flipper works pretty decent. If you, uh, it takes a little getting used to, but this is another nice competitive EDC option. Now... Finalize the review. Let's put all these away. Keep those in mind. Also keep the SE in mind. My final opinion of this knife is it's probably one of the top three budget uh, folding knives in the three inch blade region, three to three and a half inch region for the money. For $30, I think you're getting an insanely good amount of quality out of this knife. There's no up and down. A bead on this knife. I've used it very extensively. There's no hot spots. The traction isn't the greatest, but it's not a hard use knife. And EDC tasks, I've never had an issue with this knife. Not one. When I was hard cutting and doing cardboard for 20 minutes straight, yeah, it started to slip a little bit and get a little bit annoying. When I was carving, yes, it did interfere with the controllability of the knife. But for the money, I would say this is in the top three knives that you have to get under $35. Um, it, it's just one of the best. It really is. I cannot tout this knife enough. You see a lot of other people who do. And one other thing I want to mention, this knife can beat some Spydercos with the centering. I've had Spydercos that the centering was all the way over. And really, if you wanted to take that side-to-side -side blade play out and you tweaked it, It'd be perfectly centered. So, really I can't say enough good things about this knife. I'm tired. I know I've been rambling. This probably isn't the most coherent review, but I hope you've gotten the point. 
this is an excellent, excellent knife. Um, after uh, pretty much, that's it. You know, go get you one. I highly recommend it. Uh, out of ten stars, I'd probably get it in nine and a half. Uh, when I make my star rating scales, I do include the uh, thought of price. So, for what you're paying, I say nine and a half stars easily. Uh, go get you one of these today. They're just absolutely worth it. Now, real quick, I want to put this away. Uh, give you a little bit of quick update for the channel. Um, have a package coming in from Blade HQ tomorrow. Today is the 11th. This will be up on the 12th. So I do have a package coming in tomorrow. Uh, we'll be doing an unboxing video on that. Also, the second, uh, the last video I posted, the uh, issues about knife community video. That video is really, really long. So I do want to give you all another chance. Uh, this is the Recycled Firefighter Wallet. Only carried once, still in great condition, no real signs of use, no stretching out or anything. This is the tan on, uh, the gray on gray, foliage gray on gray, uh, boot leather, firefighter wallet. And once I hit 50 subs, I will be giving this wallet away. The only real um, catch is you have to be subscribed. So I'll probably pick it out of my uh, subscribers list at random. And this will be given away to one of you lucky viewers. So comment down below um, what you liked about the video, what you would like to see improved with my review process. And uh, yeah, I'll change it to 50 subs and whoever subbed to me is entered in the contest. So if you just comment on the video and you didn't sub to me, that's not going to cut it. I need a sub. So once I get to 50 subs... One of you lucky guys is going to get this. But until tomorrow, when I see you on this camera again, and I am unboxing a beautiful order from Blade HQ, you guys have a great day, a great night, a great morning whenever you're watching this. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Stay smart and stay sharp.